for the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. Today we're going to be doing an enrichment activity using finger weaving. Now normally whenever you weave or knit you use needles or a loom, but to do finger weaving you're only going to use your hands. So a few things you're going to need though are some yarn. Any kind of yarn is fine. It can be any thickness or any color that you like and you'll also need a pair of scissors. Always make sure you ask your parents before using any scissors. Before we get to our finger weaving though, we're gonna read some special stories together about weaving and knitting and working with our hands. I hope you guys are ready. Let's get started with our story time. The Weaver by Thatcher Hurd. Pictures by Eliza Kleeman. Beyond the earth, near yet far, the weaver sits in the light of the rising sun, singing a song, watching the world while her fingers are at work. First, she spins her thread from trails of shooting stars, white clouds, and spider webs hung with dew. Then she dyes the thread with the colors of the morning, blue from the sky, green from the grass, yellow from the sun on the fields, purple from the deep water. As the sun rises in the sky, her fingers work faster and the shuttle begins to fly back and forth across her loom. Looking down on the world, the weaver sees a smile on someone's face, a hug between friends, babies crying and then held warm in their parents' arms. Children laughing, a kiss given with love, a heart that is full. She weaves all these things into her cloth, a cloth of friendships, love intertwined, happy, sad, angry, joyful, lives held together like vines. The sun is setting and the weaver's work is almost done. Gently, she lifts the cloth from her loom and begins to dance over mountains, and rivers and towns, over cities and countries and the deep ocean. As she dances, she spreads the cloth like a coat across the night sky. The stars and the moon are its buttons. Its pockets are filled with our memories. It drifts down to the earth below, a coat to warm us and protect us, a coat to fill us with joy. And as it settles around us, we dream in our beds while the moon glows above. And the weaver dances back to her home, far above the world. The end. Wasn't that a good story? This next one is one of my favorites. I wonder if you've heard of it before. Socks for Supper by Jack Kent. In a faraway place, in a long ago time, there lived an old man and his wife. They were very poor. All they had was a tumble down house and a tiny turnip garden. One day he said to his wife, one can get tired of eating nothing but turnips. Not far away, there lived a couple who had a cow. The old man and his wife used to look at the cow and dream of milk and cheese. Maybe they'll sell us some, said the old man. We don't have any money, his wife reminded him. Perhaps we could trade them something for some milk, said the old man. Perhaps we could, his wife agreed, and they searched the house for something to trade. They looked and looked, but the only thing they could find that wasn't in pieces or tatters was a pair of socks. The old man took the socks and went to see the couple who had the cow. A little while later, he came happily home again with a bucket of milk and a small cheese. This is so good, said his wife. It wasn't long before they began to wish they had some more, but they didn't have any more socks to trade. I will knit some, said the old woman but she didn't have any yarn. So she unraveled part of the old man's sweater and knitted a pair of socks with that. 
they again traded the socks for milk and cheese and feasted as they did before. When it was all gone, the old woman knitted another pair of socks. And once more, the old man traded them for milk and cheese. Yum. When that was gone, the old woman started knitting again. But there was now only enough yarn left for one sock. What good is one sock? The old woman asked. They won't trade any milk or cheese for that. We'll see, said the old man, and he took the sock to the couple with the cow. I only have half a pair of socks this time, he said. Would you trade half a bucket of milk and half a cheese for this? Oh, no, that is not necessary, said the farmer. You see, said the farmer's wife, one sock is exactly what I need. She was knitting her husband a sweater for Christmas. She'd gotten the yarn for it by unraveling the socks, and she needed just one more to finish the job. But the sweater didn't fit. So the wife gave it to the old man, for she had noticed he didn't have one. And it was just the right size. The end. Weren't those stories really fun? Well, now I think it's time for us to do some weaving and knitting of our own. But remember, we're just going to use our hands. Now, I hope you got your yarn and your scissors. If you need to pause the video to go and get those, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, let's get started on our finger weaving. So to get started, we're going to take some of our yarn. We're actually going to pull a few inches of it right here. We're going to make a knot. All right, pull it through. We haven't closed the knot yet. We're going to slide that over our thumb and then pull it like that. So we have a little bit holding her off the end. Now we're going to take our piece of yarn and go up under our first finger and then come down over the top of our middle finger. All right, now we're going to loop under and down over. So you see here we have a little line of yarn across our two fingers. So we've pulled it down. We're going to come back up in between them, go over the middle finger, reach under your middle finger, and back over that first finger. So what you'll notice here is you have one, two, and one, two. There are two pieces of yarn on both of those fingers. We're going to grab the bottom loop of yarn, and pull it over the top of your finger. You literally just pull it over, you lift it, and you can scoot your finger underneath there. So now we have only one piece of yarn here on our fingers. So we're gonna pull that piece of yarn again in between and go over our middle finger, come back up, and over our first finger. So now we have those two again. Grab the bottom one that's closest here to your palm, pull it over the top of your finger, bottom one, Pull it there over the top, all right? We've got our two, we need two more. So we come over our middle finger, up between the two fingers, back down over our first finger. So we have those two. Grab the bottom one, pull it over the top, grab the bottom one, pull it over the top. All right, and we're gonna keep doing this where we go over and under for a little bit. Now it's okay. If your yarn starts to kind of slide up and down your fingers, you can just push it back down. Come up in the middle, go over and over. Remember, always pull from the bottom. Don't pull the top one, or it's just gonna come unraveled. Go over that middle finger, over the first finger. Here we go. And you'll keep doing this for however long you wanna make your necklace. Just remember, always, like I said, pull from that bottom piece of thread over the top, looping over and over. There we go. We'll just do a couple more and we'll be done with this one. All right, last one, over and over. There we go. Grab the bottom one, pull it over the top. Grab the bottom one and pull it over the top, all right. So we're gonna pull a few inches of thread now from the end. So we have all this looped here around our hand. This right here is just here from the edge. We're gonna pull it and now we're gonna use the scissors 
to cut it. Remember, make sure you ask permission before you use the scissors. Now you have these two loops right here on your fingers. You're gonna pull the first one off, holding on to it. Now you're gonna reach over and pull the second one off. So you're holding the two circles here next to each other. Take your piece of thread that you just cut. And we're gonna loop it twice through those circles and then pull. It's gonna make sort of a knot. So then when we pull all of our yarn, it creates a braided necklace. There we go. Now I like to add some beads to mine, to my knitting. So you can actually get some pretty color beads if you like them, whatever colors you like. I usually put a knot right here at the edge of the yarn. There we go. It actually makes it easier to slip the beads on and just kind of push them through right here on the end. There we go. You slide them all the way down. Just put a couple on right here. Like I said, you can use whatever color that you want. You can use and make it as long or as short as you want. You can keep weaving to make a longer necklace. Mine's a little bit shorter for today. There we go. Just pull the yarn through right there. I'll put a couple on this side. Let's see. Push it through right here. So that it matches. It's even on each end. Oh, there we go. Pull it. And we'll knot it again here at the end so it doesn't start to unravel. All right, so here we have our necklace. Then you go to tie it on. You can just tie the top into a bow right here to connect it. There we go. All right, guys. So practice your finger weaving. You can actually use different finger weaving if you want to add more to your fingers. You don't just have to use the first two. You can use all four to make things like scarves. And even there are ways you can uh, make finger weaving with animals. So make sure that you uh, try it out. Like I said, uh, you just need the yarn, the scissors, and your hands. Share anything that you make with us on our social media. So show us how creative you guys can get. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today for our stories and for our finger weaving activity. I hope you had a lot of fun. I know that I did. And I hope I see you again very soon.